Welcome to the Fangled Cast, brought to you by Fangled Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. Everybody, welcome back to the Fangled Cast. Today, we're going to talk about one of my super pet topics I just love to talk about, which is super niche marketing. And because of that, I'm really lucky to have Shala Dinkoy on the, and I hope I pronounced it right, on the you show. You did. Hey, you did, you did, you did it. Great, great. And and because I am the king of screwing up bios, I'm going to instead ask my friend Shala to tell you a little bit about who she is, where she comes from, and why I consider her to be one of the experts on niche marketing. Thank you so much. You don't have to be the king of screwing up anything. I think everybody should avoid reading bios. When I'm introduced at conferences, I say, please, can you just tell them what you think about me and how we met? Just tell that story. I'll tell the rest. Yeah. Really? Because everybody goes into this, like, you know, glaze. Zombie mode. As, <laughs> yeah. And like, do you really want the first 30 seconds of attention about you to be about that? Anyway, don't get me started. Oh, but but I didn't get a there. chance to tell people where you went to high school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who you went out with. Yeah. Well, so my name is Chala Dinkoy. I'm the CEO and founder of The Repositioning Expert. Andrew and I had the pleasure of meeting on my podcast. I believe you did the Naked Marketing podcast, Andrew. I did. The, the inaugural, the first. Oh, that's naked right. I was the podcast. first one. And, and you were. And not were the naked first naked. On the naked podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we talked about marketing mistakes. So that was really great. And we got along so well that we just thought we'd continue the party here. Sounds like a plan. So tell me yeah. your definition of super niche marketing. So when I used to work for these big giant corporations, just like you did when you were young mm -hmm. and I worked for Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay, and I was always, you know, getting, they're, they're such sexy brands. People are trying to sell to me. I don't, did that happen to you when you were working in corporate? You know, it's funny when, when I worked for companies with brands that people didn't know, it was a very different world than when I worked for a Fortune 100 where the name of the company opened the door. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But it's just this nonstop being pitched, right? Absolutely. So, and for many reasons, I had to say no, not because I'm mean. I mean, I am Canadian. We're very nice. But because most of the time, the vendor had a terrible pitch. Yep. Most of the time, they were not differentiated. Most of the time, they were not saying or doing anything different than any of their competitors. And in fact, 86% of buyers, this is a statistic that they can't tell the difference between two suppliers. Mm -hmm. So then I, when I became, you know, my own, you know, I own my own company. I started my own business nine years ago. I thought, how am I going to differentiate myself from all the other coaches in, in the landscape? And then I thought about, well, how did we used to launch these brands when we had Pepsi, Pizza, Frito-Lay? Like every year I had to launch new products. Well, we had a process of strategy of figuring out where is the gap in the market? You, you're, you have all these existing products under the same brand. Well, how on earth do you introduce a variant? Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate it basically? So you don't have a, what we used to call a stillbirth if you have, you know, you sure. don't sell. And so you don't want to cannibalize. So that's what I, I took that process and, you know, there are millions of dollars spent on those processes, but I made it free for small businesses and I made it last two to four weeks instead of like months and years. So that's how I became up with this super niche model of differentiating yourself, hooking interest and um, being able to talk very specifically to a very specific target industry or interest group and then talking about a very specific problem that you solve for them. Absolutely. You know, one of the things, you know, at the core of Fangled, we always say we, we help people convert every touch into voracious advocates for their brand. That's our, that's our pitch every time we, we give a talk, that's part of it. But what's, what's interesting about this differentiation model, and I think this is somewhere where we, you and I are completely aligned, is differentiating from your competitors matters, yes, but differentiating in a way that takes in account what matters to yeah, your, meaningful, to your, relevant, meaningful yeah. to your customer and puts you apart from any other solution that's out there to the same problem that you're solving. Yeah, it's really, you know, the smaller that you go, the less competitors that you have. 
But the trick is not to find the smallest problem. <laughs> the trick is to find a problem that nobody else is addressing that mm -hmm. is a demand. So if you think about the Swiffer, we always call it the Swiffer. Like, have you found the Swiffer in your industry? Is they did like they did research and, and women were saying, we work hard all day and we want something convenient, easy, quick, and cheap to be able to clean. So right. that's why they had these disposable cleaning and it was, it launched this huge industry of disposable Absolutely. cleaning products. I don't even know if you remember that oh, as a marketer. I, I do. And, and the interesting part of it too, the research that they did was also what would happen if we made something so lightweight that even kids could move it around so that people, 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 that was another one of the features that was the delighter, yeah. not the core of the brand. It turned out yeah, to be yeah, very yeah. important. But, but what I'm trying to get to is yeah. they came to that conclusion or they brought like, that was a whole bunch of mm -hmm. asking people what is wrong, asking yeah. people what they need, asking the market. Mm -hmm. The thing that drives me nuts about marketers in especially the B2B space is that they're telling clients what to do and how to, what to say and who to target without talking to yeah. the market and the market yeah. never lies. Nope. You know, there's there's three areas in the product development that we talk about all the time. There's how do I recognize a real problem in the market that I have a solution for? That's mm -hmm. one product launch. Then there's I have a solution to a problem that people aren't aware of, but they're going to immediately recognize it when they see the solution. Mm -hmm. And then there's I'm solving problems nobody has. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the products that we, we, we don't want any part of. But know. when, you know, but when when in the B2B space, which is really probably 80, 90% of our work. The mm -hmm. challenge there is that it's very feature oriented and nobody recognizes the benefit. So yeah. when, when you're in, in, imagine you're in the business of making three quarter inch bolts. Mm -hmm. How do you separate yourself? How do you differentiate yourself? You, it isn't the product. It's, mm -hmm. I can set up a delivery system that you're never gonna have to shut down your plant because you don't have one. I can give you full support pre post market. I can align myself with your production schedule. You don't even have to worry about it. They're always going to be there when you need them. There's all of these ways that I can benefit the way that we do business, even though we're selling you the same thing everybody else has. Exactly. So that reminds me of a client, a story of a client. They were doing, uh, they printed labels. That was mm -hmm. their business, yep. like completely unsexy, totally. And it was a, a two young, gorgeous women, woman owned business, and they could not, they were a commodity. They could not get out of that commodity space. And so what we did is um, we, we looked at what are the industries. So we, uh, they did the research, they honed in on um, packaged goods. And then the number one problem that they were solving was just in time because they, because, you know, they were often at an extra premium at midnight sending these, you know, stickers that had failed in some way on production. And when stickers fail on production and production lines, it delays production and costs Absolutely. a ton of money. So then with the research, we quantified how, how much money people were losing, the buyers were losing what it was costing them. And then that became their, their super niche is that we are the fast track um, label company. Mm -hmm. So that became their hook. And as soon as people heard that, they were already in that kind of pain. And that's what, what their super niche became. It's brilliant. There's a similar story. There's a company that I, I did some work with in uh, St. Louis and their business is blow molding bottles like the ones that you get a, a quart of oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they discovered that the niche in the market that nobody wanted to attend were smaller orders. Most people, once they get their machine set up, they want to run hundreds of thousands. They don't want to run mm -hmm. a thousand or mm -hmm. 2000. Mm -hmm. And by, by creating a system internally in the company where they could do quick changeovers in mm -hmm. materials, molds, and otherwise, they were able to go after a market at a higher margin. Much than, better. Yeah. And, and if you want a small batch of, of blow molded bottles to your brand with your own mold in an, in, in to you in great economics, where you don't have to keep a hundred thousand of them when you only make 10,000 units a year, mm -hmm. these guys just dominate and they have the yeah. quality, same quality system, the final product, everything is above standard. It's brilliant. It's, it's a, a super. That's neat. awesome. 
So that's exactly what we're talking about. So, and it, it's even better when it's a service because services are so hard. Like, you know, with if it's a widget, it's a widget. Here it is, mm -hmm. you know, here it is. Okay, I get that's hard to sell because everyone's trying to sell, oh, you know, the, the features and benefits. But with a service, you can't even see the damn thing. And everybody's saying the same thing. So I had an IT company. Now they're yeah. like the worst offenders, right? Okay. IT companies, staffing companies, honest to God, they're like the worst marketing companies, worst offenders for Jeez, generic nice. marketing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not you, not me, but some of them. And in fact, I go to these giant orgies of uh, procurement conferences. Yeah. I used to before COVID, right? And so this is where uh, businesses are, are being introduced to larger businesses and deals are being made on the floor. Sure. So uh, I t there was so many, uh, there were three notices in the um, catalog and they said, please, no more IT staffing companies, no more IT companies and no more marketing companies. We just don't wanna meet anymore. Like how rude yeah. and how sad. Yeah. And the reason for that is because there's so many of them and none of them are differentiated. They're like, if I have an IT company, I have one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation is how sad it is. So I had an IT company, one of these poor IT companies came to me and said, you know, Chala, we need more clients and we're, we're losing half our revenue. And this was in the millions. Again, we went through the super niching and we found a super niche. And guess what it was? It was helping healthcare call centers reduce call wait times. And we sub-branded the super niche on hold rescue. And we even created a logo Brilliant. with the, you know, the phone lady on mm -hmm. the operator with the red cross. And they cross sold this service to an existing client that they were already servicing and made a hundred, uh, what was it? $805,000 within a couple of months. They didn't have to buy anything. They didn't mm -hmm. have to hire anyone. That's what's available if you super niche, it could become an extra revenue stream. You don't mm -hmm. have to change anything. You just have to add an extra revenue stream just because you happen to find that super niche gap in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where I first came across the, this concept that really got me excited was reading that book about blue ocean strategy. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm, with that, but yes, yes. Um, you know, truly there, there are so many ways in, when I was in the plastic strapping okay. industry, which is that's that green stuff that holds things to pallets. Uh -huh. And I used to travel 120 countries. Uh, I was, I was 300, 200 and something days a year, 300,000 air miles selling that globally. Oh and, and the way that we were able to grow was there were specific equipment out in the global market that required the highest tech version of that product. And there mm -hmm. were only a few manufacturers in the world that could make it. And we sold into all of these industries based on how often we didn't shut down your plant because it failed in your machine. Mm, I and love it. Was, it. <laughs> and that was, that was the first time that super niche really became mm. important. The tobacco industry in Brazil, uh, they, they they make these 150 kilo pallets of tobacco, not wow. cigarettes, but the tobacco gets processed and it's a, it's a cube and they run through a machine. We figured out how much it cost every time the, the strap failed and the line shut down for five minutes to reload the machines. So the wow. domestic product that was being used was failing at a rate of like two to 3%. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I'm probably off with my numbers, but I'm, I'm gonna use those just for now. Mm -hmm. We were 0.0001% in a day. In two days, we might have one failure. So the cost so, of, of that- I was gonna say, of that probably millions. Made our product free compared to the cost. <laughs> but we also then wow. dug even deeper and figured out ways using the import strategy because almost every one of those pallets left the country that we were able to do temporary admission, use, show the measurement to the government and regain back at the end, the import taxes. So, oh. so we, we took over the market and, and provided them with the greatest service in the world. The fact that our strap worked, the other strap worked after it was on the pallet didn't matter. It was, we can prevent you from having to shut down your team. Yeah. Because the, the shutdown, when, we, when we, we pitched it, was not only is there the cost of the time, but what does it do to the, 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 your employees that are, that are there mm -hmm. doing their thing and all of a sudden they have mm -hmm. to stand around and wait for the machine to get fixed? Yeah. Come back. What does it do to morale? What does it do to the... Yeah. And, and it Productivity. Became, yep. Yeah. 
And it was, it went from never selling into the market to like 12 C containers a season. Wow. Well, the truth of it is you can have the greatest product in the world or the yep. greatest service in the world, but if you have the wrong messaging yep, or if you have the wrong targeting. So all of this comes down to strategy. So if they didn't have a strategist like you, they could have had the best, you know, thing in the world but nobody would know about it. You'd just yep. be talking to yourself. Yep. And we, we have a, 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 an argument that we make all the time with folks. As soon as I hear someone say, what are the features and benefits? The, the, the little sirens go up around my head. Because <laughs> features and benefits are worthless. It's benefits and features. Yeah. Features oh. are only what prove that the benefits are real. So if mm -hmm. I tell you the benefit of our company is this, I'm going to use my features to prove it. Mm -hmm. But when you go buy a product, you're buying the benefit. You're, mm -hmm. you're, it's, you know, you take it to a luxury brand. Why, mm -hmm. why does someone buy a Porsche? Mm -hmm. It isn't because of all of the little features and stuff that are in it. It's because of how it makes you feel, mm -hmm. uh, the image, the, 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 the drive, the color, the, the excitement, all of the things that are involved in it. And then by the way, I get all of that because it has this powered engine, this much torque, mm -hmm. this much. Th those right. things. It's a means to, to the end. Yeah. So if you sell yeah. in the restaurant business, they always say, don't ever sell someone a steak, sell them the sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really, that's it is. niche. People that's what marketing sizzle. is, yeah. Yep, yep. So tell me, tell me, do you, uh, any other really cool examples of, of super niche you want to share with the? God the almighty, I've got so many. I mean, I'll tell you some more. Uh, I'll tell you a, a B2B, uh, B2C one. I've got, most of them are B2B, but I'll tell you a B2C one just so. Um, sure it's just Rather fascinating that. how it works. Yeah. Is uh, wealth advisors. My God, there's a thousand, thousands of yes. them, right? Like millions of them. And, and in fact, they're taught not to specialize in whatever reason, them, mortgage brokers and realtors. Yep. They're taught like anybody with a pulse go and sell to them. Right. Yep. So these poor wealth advisors have no wealth. In fact, I've written about that. Most of them, the majority of them don't just like 80, 20 rule for anyone. But this one uh, wealth advisor who hired me and uh, we super niched her in divorcing women. And it turned out when we did the research that the number one problem divorcing women have, you're neither a woman nor divorcing woman, but apparently what they have is that they're afraid of uh, their lifestyle not continuing at the same level. Yeah. And so her um, niche became divorcing women then her marketing became, there were 20 meetup groups in Toronto alone for divorcing women. So she would go to those and she would, instead of running after people to talk about something very personal like money, and nobody wanted to talk to her as a stranger about money, which she now was, she was sought after because all she was doing was doing education around how do you maintain your lifestyle? How do you maintain your lifestyle? And then her, um, the website changed to divorcingwoman.ca and the tagline changed to, you know, maintaining your lifestyle. So her practice, not just her practice, but her entire mindset shifted around from selling, which is what they're taught, yep. to helping. Yep. And so it was such a, a, a huge shift that, you know, she was being asked to speak about this all the time and her oh, entire yeah. practice shifted. Yeah. So that's what's available to you when you find the super niche that marries what you sell and what is the need in the market? That's really, really powerful examples of, of what we're talking about. Hey, before before we wrap up, I do I know you've got a polish your pitch program coming up and and uh, mastering. I think there's a master class that you've got coming up in the next. That's week. right. Yes, really? thank you for for mentioning it. It's coming up on the 13th next week, 13th of May. So if you see this recording after 13th of May, I am sorry. You'll have to wait for the next one but it is at noon Eastern and it is called the lead gen masterclass, how to leverage your elevator pitch. And we will be, I will be taking you through 90 minutes of step-by-step -step of how do you find your super niche and how do you use it? Yep. And you know, it's funny that the, the word lead gen has become one of those, one of those things that somehow Buzzwords, yeah. 3000 different definitions and, yeah. and it scares people off. For, for folks who, who know me and, and watch the show, she actually knows what lead gen is, yeah. how to use it. So it's not- I, It's overused, yeah. Lead, lead, lead gen is not some guy in a foreign call center who can pull a list off of the internet and send it to you. That's not lead yeah. gen. That's just list making. 
So if, if you really want to learn more about super niche and, and, and how to generate real leads for your business, I, I'd highly recommend getting, getting in touch. And how, how can people get in touch with you if they want? Thank to- you. I was just going to say the link is repositioner.com slash lead gen. And uh, maybe we'll have it in the show notes. Yeah, we will. I'll, I'll be sure that down, down below, right after you subscribe, <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see the, uh, the links to all of, all of her great stuff. Um, I highly recommend anybody who's listening to the show, get in touch and get to know uh, the force of Canada who I've brought on, <laughs> brought on, brought on the Fango class today. Is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have asked you that you want oh, to share with the audience? Oh, probably, my God. I could tell you so many things, but I'm not going to. No, nothing. <laughs> I've been gypped. I've been gypped. You've been gypped. Thanks for having me, though. You're fun. Thanks so much for coming on. This was this was a great, a great conversation. I'm really really glad to know you and, and have you in the network and more importantly, have you on the show. I'm you sure bet. I'm sure we're going to have lots of things to do together as the years go on. Here's so, hoping. Yeah. Well, uh, well, maybe I'm done with you. Who knows? So, <laughs> so anyhow, everybody at home, uh, thanks for watching. I know some of you are on your treadmill, some of you in the hot tub, checking out the Fangled cast. Thanks Lovely. for joining us. If, if you enjoyed it, like I said, click, click down below, make sure you subscribe. Mm-hmm. And if you don't subscribe, I, I, I understand I won't be hurt too bad. Tax <laughs> a friend, let, let the old people in your life know that podcasts exist and they can check it out too. True. When I say old, I mean older than me. And we, yes. will, and we will see you all. Thanks again for coming. I will see you all on the next Fangled Cast a week from today. Bye now. Bye everyone. Brought to you by Fangle Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand.